This is a quick developer tutorial covering how to publish an asset for sale using the Payswarm web payment standard. Publishing something for sale on Payswarm is a quick five step process. The first step is to create an asset which is a description of the thing that you are selling. Uh, it could be a blog article, a song, a movie, an ebook, a dog walking service or anything else that is typically exchanged for money. An asset also specifies restrictions on who must be paid when a sale occurs. So uh, it's something like who can sell the asset and a variety of other preferences that you might want to set on something that you've created. Now after you've created uh, the asset, the second step is to digitally sign it, which ensures that no one can change the preferences that you've set uh, on uh, the asset without invalidating your uh, digital signature. So uh, after the asset is created and it's digitally signed, then the asset can be used in something called a listing. Uh, so this is the third step. The third step uh, is, ba is basically to create a listing, which is a description of the terms under which an asset is being sold. Uh, so these terms include the final list of people that should be paid, um, the usage rights associated with the asset and other sale details that the vendor wants to place upon the asset. Uh, so the asset is kind of the description of the thing that is being sold. The listing are the terms under which it's being sold, like um, the price and the, the license and, and things like that. Um, after you've created the listing, uh, you basically digitally sign it, uh, which ensures that no one can change the details uh, of the offer. Uh, so at this point, what we have is a, an asset that describes what is being sold, and it's digitally signed so it can't be tampered with. We have a listing that specifies the uh, terms under which the sale can occur, and it's digitally signed so it can't be tampered with. So once we have all that together, we take the blob of asset and listing data and we publish it uh, to a website. Now keep in mind that this can be any website. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a secure website like an HTTPS website. It can be just a regular HTTP website and the reason for that is we've digitally signed everything so uh, our offer can't be forged by anyone. So let's go ahead and take a little deeper look at what an asset and a listing looks like. Um, so this is uh, basically what an asset looks like. Uh, we're using JavaScript to create the asset, so uh, this is a simple uh, JSON-like uh, JavaScript object, and it's just a bunch of key value pairs that are set up. Uh, so up here, we're basically saying that this is a new asset that we're creating. We're using JSONLD uh, to uh, describe the asset, so it's a way of expressing linked data. Uh, so the context in JSONLD basically tells the application what these key value pairs actually mean. Um, there's a further uh, explanation on what JSONLD is on Google, just Google JSONLD, and you should be able to find a fairly decent explanation on JSONLD. Uh, you basically use it like JSON, so just pretend this entire file is a JSON file. The ID identifies the asset on the web, uniquely identifies it on the web. Uh, this thing that we're creating is an asset, that's what this line says. Uh, the creator is the person that created the asset. Um, so for this example, it's developer Joe that created the asset. Uh, the title of the asset is what shows up when the asset is being purchased. Uh, the asset content is where the person can go to download uh, the asset. Uh, not all assets have this, but uh, since this is a, a quick demo, you can go to this location and download the asset. Um, the asset provider is the person that is selling, uh, the person or, or organization that's selling the asset. Um, or that has listed the asset for sale. Um, and then the listing restrictions are restrictions on how the asset can be sold. So uh, there's a certain date, a period that this asset description is valid for uh, that allows other people to resell your asset. So let's say you created a song and you want other people to resell it. You can say, I want other people to be able to resell this song uh, for the next two or three days. And then I might change my mind on what, uh, what the other price restrictions restrictions and, and whatnot for the asset uh, might be. Um, the vendor is who you allow to actually resell the song. So sometimes the only person that you trust to sell your content is uh, is yourself. But in the case of uh, maybe a band selling a song, they would want to get their 
uh, fans involved and uh, they would specify that the vendor could be basically anyone, any one of their fans. Um, and then the pay rule basically makes it so that the transaction processor, the, the PaySwarm authority that's processing payment, uh, can uh, charge a certain fee to process the payment on top of it. So this is just a, a simple description of an asset. It's like 15 lines of, of uh, JSON code. Uh, and then once we've done this description, we can digitally sign it using the PaySwarm uh, library or using a PaySwarm library. So this is the asset. The listing uh, looks kind of like this. And the listing, again, is, is the terms under which the asset can be sold. Uh, again, we see this JSONLD context that tells um, JSONLD aware or linked data aware applications how to interpret the key value pairs. Um, this is the ID for the listing. Again, we need a globally unique identifier. Uh, the type of object we're creating is a listing. Um, this is the vendor that's actually offering the thing for sale. So this, this vendor is called the Web Devs, um, and they are the one that has created the listing that sell, says that they want to sell that asset. Um, this payee is the person that should be paid, the person or organization that should be paid. So doing a quick scan down, this destination is the destination financial account that the money should be deposited into. Um, the uh, the flat amount for one US dollar is the sale price, basically the, the amount of money that should be put into this account. Um, and the comment is what should show up on the digital receipt file. Uh, so this basically says who should be paid when this asset is purchased. Um, this thing is called a pay rule. It basically says that the PaySwarm authority, the person that's trans transacting or running the transaction, uh, can only take five percentage uh, five percentage points or five percent of the final sale price. So if the sale price is a dollar, um, the PaySwarm authority can take it much uh, at most five cents. Um, otherwise, it, the PaySwarm authority is not allowed to uh, resell this, uh, run the transaction, sell this, sell this work. This prevents uh, PaySwarm authorities from becoming too greedy, basically, on the network. Uh, the asset is described here. So this is the identifier the, for the asset. And then there's an asset hash, uh, which is basically a, a cryptographic hash of the asset that makes sure that this asset listed is the same one that we expect it to be. So if someone goes and changes the asset, the asset hash would change and this listing would no longer be valid. Um, the license uh, is the license that you want to associate with the asset upon sale. Uh, so this, in this particular case, it's a personal use license. And the license hash, again, makes sure that this license is the license that we think it is. So if someone goes in and changes the text of this license, the license hash would no longer match and the listing would become invalid. Um, this is to make sure that we're not taken by surprise if the license changes. Um, so we, we know exactly the type of license we want to have associated with the asset upon sale. Uh, the last two things is a valid from and valid until date, which basically says how long the offer is, is valid for. So that's basically a listing. Uh, so an asset, again, describes the thing that you're selling. The listing describes the terms under which you're selling them. Um, now let's go ahead and try this out by uh, running a quick program that will create an asset and a listing. And then um, once you've created the, the asset and the listing, it'll publish it to a website. I'm using the Payswarm JS uh, uh, node module uh, to do this. So if we go in the examples directory uh, here and we uh, run the uh, publish asset for sale example, it will generate an asset uh, and a listing and, and publish it. Now this whole process happens pretty quickly. So uh, let's go ahead and try it out. Um, so as you can see, the, it generated the asset digitally signed it, generated the listing, digitally signed it, uh, and then it published the asset to this URL and the listing to this URL. Now if you'll notice they're the same URL, they just have a different uh, fragment identifier at the end of uh, them. So um, if we use uh, curl to download uh, this uh, asset, we should get back something that looks like what we set up. So we'll uh, run it through a JSON uh, pretty printer 
uh, to get back something that's easier to read. Uh, so here it is. So this is the asset and listing that we just created. Um, up here is uh, is the is the asset, and as you can see, there's a digital signature uh, here that makes sure that it's uh, it's what we said uh, it was, or make sure that nobody can tamper with it. Uh, and if we keep going down. Uh, we'll see the uh, listing. So here's the asset hash in the listing, uh, the person that should be paid, um, and then the signature associated with the uh, listing itself. So um, that's an example of uh, how to uh, create an asset and a listing and publish it to a website.